But also around this time, um, Manson's friend Bobby Bozole got into a situation with the motorcycle gang called the Straight Satans. Now, these guys would frequently visit the family and would do little jobs with them and things like that. Bobby's friend, Gary Hinman, made some mescaline that Bobby sold to the gang for about a thousand bucks. And he delivered the mescaline to Danny DiCarlo, who was a member of the gang, and DiCarlo delivered it to the rest of the bikers. Well, the next day, DiCarlo and some of the members of the Satans confronted Bobby. They said, dude, you sold us some bad drugs. We all got sick. And they roughed him up a bit and told him that he needed to go back to Gary Hinman and, and get their money back. Well, DiCarlo, along with Bruce Davis, drove Beausoleil along with Susan Atkins and Mary Brunner, who were close with Hinman, to Hinman's house. When Davis and DiCarlo dropped off the trio, Mary and Susan went inside the house to visit with Gary. But after they went in the house, Davis gave Bobby a gun. He said, look, keep this concealed. But if Hinman resists, then bring the gun out, and that way he'll take you seriously. So DiCarlo told Bobby to call him when they got their money, and they'd come back and pick him up. So Beausoleil went inside, and he confronted Hinman about the bad drugs, and he commanded the return of the $1,000. And Hinman said, look, I don't have that. That mescaline wasn't bad, and I've already spent that money. Well, Beausoleil got pissed off. And he pulled out the gun and starts to threaten Hinman. And then he strikes Hinman with the gun two or three times. And Hinman went and got his checkbook. You know, Hinman was one of these guys, he, he didn't believe in violence. So he was trying not, not to fight back, trying not to be violent. All right. So he got his checkbook and he's showing him, look, I've already spent the money. You can see right here, I don't have the $1,000. And um, so Bobby was convinced that, he'll, that Hinman was telling him the truth. And uh, he said, look, he, he said, uh, I'm going to go look around and see if you got anything I think I can sell that might make up for this money. And so while he went into the other room, he gave the gun to Susan Atkins and told her to keep it on him and, and don't let him move. And um, Susan didn't want to touch the gun. And so she put it on the table. Well, at this point, him and lunge for the gun and Atkins cries out and Beausoleil runs back into the room grabs Hinman's arm and begins to fight with him. While the two men are wrestling over the gun, one of the two females telephones Spawn Ranch and reports that there's trouble, that Hinman's taking the gun, and that he and Beausoleil are fighting over it. And then about this time, during their struggle, the gun discharged. And the bullet didn't hit anyone, but it pierced the kitchen sink. And um, that sudden shock of the gun's loud concussion enabled Beausoleil to get possession of the gun to get it back from Hinman. And uh, Bobby called Charlie at the ranch. He said, look, he said, there's no money. And um, according to some sources, Charlie had heard that Hinman had inherited about $21,000 from his grandmother's estate. So Charlie wasn't buying this. So he had Bruce Davis drive him to Gary's house. And Charlie brought a sword with him. He had this samurai sword, you know, that someone had given him. I think one of the straight Satans had, had given him. And um, so he brings this sword with him and goes inside, confronts Gary, and uses this sword, just slashes along the right side of his face, almost cutting him and ear off completely. So Charlie looks at Bobby and says, look, you need to get control of this. And we're going back to the ranch. Call us when you have finally got this settled. And so Manson and Davis leave. And Bobby and the girls continued to torture Hinman for three days. But Hinman kept insisting he didn't have any money. So Bobby said, look, why don't you sign over your two cars you've got sitting out there to me? He said, that'll cover the money. And at first, Hinman didn't want to agree to that either. But eventually, probably just to get them to stop hurting him, he agreed, and he signed the papers. Um, well, Bobby told the girls to start wiping the place down to make sure they didn't leave any fingerprints behind. As the girls did this, Bobby, get, Bobby began to get nervous. Gary kept asking for medical attention over his ear and face. Now, either Bobby or one of the girls, depending on what source you look at, had attempted to sew his ear up with dental floss, but it hadn't helped. And Bobby thought that him and is going to go for help and call the police to tell them what had happened. So according to Susan Atkins in her book, uh, Child of Satan, Child of God, 
Bobby went into the kitchen where she and Mary were still wiping things down. And Susan said that Bobby told them to stay in the kitchen because he was going to have to kill Gary. She claimed that Bobby then went into the other room and stabbed Gary twice in the chest. He then took some of his blood and made a paw print on the wall to make it look like the Black Panthers had done this. He also took a towel and dipped it into Hinman's blood and used it to write political piggy on the wall. She said that when they left Gary's house, he was laying on the floor clutching his rosary beads and chanting. And when they got outside, she claimed that Bobby told her that he just couldn't leave him like that. And she said that since Bobby had locked the door, he climbed through a window. And a few minutes later, Bobby came back out and told her and Mary that he had smothered him with a pillow. They left and went to have dinner at a nearby restaurant, and she said that Bobby told her, you know, I should have killed you too for not picking up the gun. Well, according to the official story, remember, that's Susan Atkins' version, where she didn't do anything wrong. According to the official story, Bobby stabbed him in twice, and then Bobby, Mary, and Susan all took turns smothering Gary with a pillow. After the murder, Bobby and the girls took one of him in his vehicles, which was a flat, and drove away. DiCarlo and members of the Straight Satans wound up accepting the old Vaxwagon van as repayment for the bad drugs and took it to Venice Beach. Subsequently, it was found in Santa Monica. Beausoleil was arrested in San Luis Obispo on August 6, 1969, driving Hinman's other vehicle, which had broken down on the freeway. He was asleep in the flat when police found him, and the knife that he used in the slaying of Hinman, which still had Hinman's blood on it, was found in the wheelbase of the car where Bobby had hidden it. Manson discussed the situation with other members of the family and decided that he had a way to get Bobby out of jail while also helping to start Helter Skelter. He would perform copycat crimes where the murders would be similar, complete with more paw prints and writings on the walls or doors of the crime scene, and he thought for sure that Bobby would be released and the Black Panthers would be blamed spurring a racial war in an already tense environment between the Panthers and the police. Armageddon was at hand, and Charlie and the family were ready to rule the world. Okie doke production.